Hey, what's up guys? John here. Bay Area and California is now posing a tax for 10 to 30 cents for every mile that you drive. Driving on the freeway could cost you more than it already does. Planned by the Metropolitan Transportation Commission to cut carbon emissions, turning those freeways into tollways and charging drivers by the mile. Portland is considering a similar tax. Tennessee, Florida and New York City all proposing similar taxes to drive your car. You have to ask yourself, why? What are the odds that all of this is happening at the same exact time? Is there something bigger that's gonna be happening next? Well, the answer is yes, and the facts are startling. I had a discussion with the mayor of Los Angeles who told me in 2030, Los Angeles will be private car driven free. And this will allow to transform highways into parks and other public spheres. We are going to walk in to a completely different economy, a completely different way of living, and people need to get prepared for it, especially if you're an entrepreneur, an investor, if you're just an American. You have to understand what is going to happen next so you can position yourself today for tomorrow. In this video, I'll break it down for you and show you exactly what's going on. Please hit the like button and hit the like button. YouTube will share this content to educate more people about what's happening in America. And if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for what definitely is the greatest wealth transfer in American history, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session. Take a look at this. So, Bay Area transportation leaders propose all-lane freeway tolling. This is between 10 and 30 cents per mile. 10 and 30 cents per mile. Now, pay close attention to this because this is going to seem far-fetched, but facts are facts. The proposal would turn Marina Del Rey Freeway into parks with low cost housing, right? This just came out a couple months ago. So they're talking about changing the freeway, Marina Del Rey, basically taking you from Venice, from Lincoln Boulevard, uh, you know, connecting to the 405. So they are talking about changing this and putting essentially 4,000 housing units, 4,000 housing units here. So when you look at this with nearly 4,000 units of low cost housing, they want to put retail and parks sounds really far-fetched. It sounds like, come on, they're not going to do this. But then our buddy, Klaus, he made a statement and this statement lines up very, very well. So it's worth paying attention to it. A practically guided car, a self-driven car will come to your hotel or wherever you are and will bring you to the airport. Actually, I had a discussion some months ago with the mayor of Los Angeles and you know Los Angeles is one of the cities with the heaviest traffic, who told me in 2030, Los Angeles will be private car driven free. And this will allow to transform highways into parks and other public spheres. Huh, what are the odds, right? What are the odds? Then we look at this, just came out Los Angeles Times yesterday, one day ago. Mammoth $2 billion 405 project marks an end to Southland's big freeway era. I'm going to say that the opening of new express lanes on the 405 freeway in northwest Orange County on Friday marked the final step of a massive $2.16 billion highway improvement project, but in many ways it also wrapped up one of the region's biggest major or the latest major freeway expansion as transportation officials move towards a more sustainable and efficient investment. The era of the big highway projects are over. An urban planning professional at USC, the big, big highway projects are going to become more rare. It's going to become more about a more balanced system. It's not that Southern California isn't expected to continue to grow, but transportation leaders are at a critical juncture facing limited space for roadways and lofty green energy goals, which together are forcing future projects to become less car centric. There's, there's certainly still more freeway projects, but nothing like the scale of this last major freeway expansion. So you can see what's happening, right? Freeways are getting phased out. And you look right here, it says they are making transit, walking and cycling the preferred option for more trips, implementing restrictions on high polluting vehicles in a significant part of the city, signaling the end of petrol and diesel powered cars and trucks to by promoting the use of zero emission alternatives. Now, the big question, places like Los Angeles, places like San Francisco, New York City, almost anywhere in America now, it is crazy expensive. Everything is extremely expensive. Without a vehicle, how do you get to work, right? Without a vehicle, how do you maintain living standards? Without a vehicle, how do you make debt obligations? 
when you know you don't have a way to get from point A to point B to go earn a living, right? Well, this is what's going to start to happen. We're going to start to see it becoming much, much, much more expensive to operate, own, and drive a vehicle. And I believe what's going to ultimately happen over the next couple of years is every year it's going to get harder and harder and harder. So you definitely, if you're barely making it right now, you want to plan in advance for this because it's the un unfortunate reality. This is what's happening. So, for example, California, they want to add two and a half million homes, you know, in the next six years. These highways, you know, the, the 110, the 105, the 405, the 10, you start to add all these highways together, you're going to see a massive, massive block of land where they would likely be able to, you know, add hundreds of thousands or millions of homes. It sounds so far-fetched. sounds like it would never happen, right? But when you look at some of these really big changes that are happening right now, for example, in the White House, uh, Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Metro, Seattle, and state of California, they have a goal to reduce homelessness 25%. Uh, in the next year, right? <laughs> Essentially the next year, 25% by 2025. So you have to ask yourself, how is this all going to happen, right? It's going to be a multi-pronged approach. It's going to be the highways and freeways. It's going to be converting offices, converting offices to uh, residential units. You know, the White House right now is uh, pitching $35 billion, $35 billion in below market rate loans to convert these assets. And the, you know, they say that it's going to actually be better for the world, right? It's going to be better. This is NPR, right? NPR's Right here, you can see the headline, NPR. They are going to be turning offices into homes so it would be better for the environment, right? So we're going to start to see all these really, really, really big changes happening in other areas, not just California and not just, you know, New York City. If, you know, right here in Northwest Florida, they're proposing new tolls for driving. In uh, Portland, they're considering something very similar. Uh, you know, toll fans worrying that they're going to stack up. In Tennessee, they're talking about, you know, even electric car fee hikes and tolls. In New York City, they're saying drivers would pay $15 to enter the busiest parts of New York City under the plan to raise funds for mass transit. This came out just a couple of days ago. So everything is going to be about this. And you have to ask yourself, well, how is this whole thing going to work? How is this whole thing going to work? Well, what I think is going to happen is I believe we're going to see a very, very, very big problem unfold in commercial real estate. We're going to see lenders refusing to lend on these assets. And because of that, these assets are going to drop dramatically in value, dramatically in value. And then there's going to be investors that are going to walk in. They're going to get a really, really great loan. They're going to be able to refurbish and convert these offices into housing. They're going to be able to, you know, they're probably going to get some major tax advantages, tax incentives. Uh, they're going to end up making a, a windfall, a windfall of money by converting these offices into residential because ultimately that's what everybody is pushing for that's what they're pushing for right so if they're going to be pushing in this direction then there's they're always going to say that they need more housing more housing we need to you know reduce one freeway we need to just you know take away a lane we need to take away two lanes and before you know it in three years four years five years we're going to start walking into a situation where these freeways start to get eliminated and public transit becomes more and more and more required and i think if you want to have a vehicle, if you want to maintain your current living standards, I believe, genuinely, I really believe that your income is going to have to dramatically increase. If if you want to be able to live, you know, like a really, really, really high end middle class lifestyle, you know, a couple of years ago, you could probably do that for 100000 a year, right? You probably do that for 100000 a year. In a couple of years, I think it's probably going to be a million dollars a year or 700000 a year. It's going to be a lot more um, because what's going to happen is inflation is likely going to continue to get a it's going to continue to get much, much, much worse. And the affordability crisis is going to continue to likely get a lot worse. And so when you have a situation where they're going to build so many apartments, they're going to build so much housing, rents are going to continue to fall in certain areas over time. But the real, real nice areas, the areas that are not going to get extremely overdeveloped, they're going to be more in demand. And those, those areas might increase in value because there's going to be fewer of those homes available and a lot of people looking to escape what could be mass, mass population zones, right? This was what could very well happen. California's revenue decline is reminiscent of the Great Recession report says. In a grim sign of the state, California is projected to see a $58 billion shortfall in revenue collection over the course of the three fiscal years from 2022 to 2024, 2025. So if people are thinking that we're going back to 2018, 2019, they're wrong, right? It's not going to happen. Everything's going to get harder. Um, but I also think it's going to get harder for some, but the opportunity is going to be massive for some as well. 
that understand what's going to happen. They're positioning themselves in the right business. They're putting themselves in the right position to capitalize on a changing world. Because as all of this happens, you have to think about this. 95% of people are completely oblivious to what's really going on. And then they're going to be forced to sell off assets at the worst possible time because they're not going to be able to make ends meet. When you know the car starts to fade away, the car insurance gets way too expensive, gas gets way too expensive, repairing these vehicles is way too expensive. People are going to start selling the car, selling the second home, selling the main home, start renting. They're going to start doing all of these things, right? This is what's going to happen. And they're planning right now. They're saying, yeah, 2024, 2025, you know, it's going to get worse. So, and I fully agree, it will get worse. It's going to get a lot worse. Um, because interest rates are not going to go back down in the short term. At least that's what it seems. Inflation is not going to go back down and the old way of life is not coming back. The impact of recent economic weakness and last year's financial market distress on state revenue has become clear that postponed payments came in much weaker than anticipated LAO report read. The report cited a cooler California economy in part due to higher borrowing costs and reduced investment as a result of actions by the Federal Reserve. Well, no, I would say it's a result of actions due to the state, what they've done to the, the business owners, what they've done to the entrepreneurs and to the people that were actually supplying jobs. They have made a direct attack on landlords, a direct attack on business owners, a direct attack on you know capitalism as a whole. That's why you saw so much money flowing out of places like California and New York City, going to places like Texas and Florida, because people wanted to go to Texas and Florida, not just because they randomly chose it, they wanted to go there to be able to live a normal life to be able to operate a business and be in a location in which their business would actually flourish, right? This isn't anything short of that. The Federal Reserve, you know, you look at Miami, for example, you look at some of these other areas, Federal Reserve has had very little impact on, uh, on these areas because what's happening? You know, the income has been diving in California and New York and has been flourishing in Florida and Tennessee and Texas. New York and California lost a combined $92 billion in income as Americans left for other states. These are the low tax places that happily scooped up these billionaires. You know, of course, right? Florida is soaking up the benefits, right? Exactly. Growing number of buildings in New York City, and this is what I think is going to be very, very interesting, and this is how this whole thing is going to start to fall. We have $2.7 trillion in commercial real estate debt that has to get refinanced in the next two and a half years. That's one in 10 commercial properties in America has to get refinanced. Where are most of these commercial properties? A lot of them are held in dense cities, Chicago, Atlanta, you know, like coincidentally, a lot of these locations, right? Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, Phoenix Metro, Seattle, state of California, you know, New York City. These areas are going to be ones that are going to be hit the hardest by the commercial real estate crash. And, you know, U.S. office real estate prices headed for a severe crash, investors say. Banks are, aren't ready for the office loan reckoning because they're not going to lend on these assets like people think they're going to lend on them. That's why I believe that we're going to see a massive rug pull in commercial real estate, a massive change to our way of living. And if you are a smart, aspiring entrepreneur, or maybe you are an entrepreneur currently, or business owner, you're positioning yourself right now, realizing the world's going to get more expensive. And if you want to maintain and grow, maybe you want to you know, live a high, high quality life, traveling internationally, you want to do everything that you want to do. The next couple of years are going to be so important, so important to make the right decisions so that you can buy options. Because at the end of the day, the options are for sale, right? You have to make the money. You make the money, you make yourself, you know, in the right situation, you put yourself in a, in a situation in which you can pivot and move, you're going to be able to move around and, you know, life is not going to really impact you. These changes aren't going to impact you. But if you don't and you ignore what they're saying here, you ignore what's happening in this room, you're going to start to, you know, wake up and you're going to be like, what is happening? Where, this is a nightmare. What do you think about this situation? Drop below, let's have a conversation about it. Hit the like button. And uh, if you'd like to fix your credit, you wanna position yourself for the greatest wealth transfer in American history, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com, book a call for Monday, just by clicking the link in the description. I'll catch you in the next video.